Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Hornsby and I am your online myofunctional therapist and today I am coming to you from Rome and I'm here at the AAMS Congress with Derek Mahoney, Dr. Derek Mahoney, who's from Sydney, Australia and I had an incredible opportunity of working with him while I was there in Sydney um, in like 2014, I exactly, think. Exactly, yeah. And we, we always want you back. So. Yeah, I would love to come back. But um, I just heard him speak and he has come out with some incredible research. Um, and I, I can't even begin to explain it. It's so much information compiled over 15 years of time with over 4,600 patients. Correct. And yeah. they're, they're kids, yeah. um, age seven to nine. So he's done huge amounts of research that, like I said, I can't even begin to understand. And I wanted to see if we could get three takeaways from him. So what do you think the first takeaway is from your research that's really important for us? I think treat early. Uh, just to give the audience an idea on the data we looked at, we looked at uh, uh, 4,600 children yeah, so uh, who much. were referred in to me for orthodontic treatment, but we looked at something different. We looked at their airway and their sleep. We performed sleep studies. We realized a lot of the children who had bad bites actually also had sleep sort of breathing problems. So uh, when I trained as an orthodontist, we would not start treatment until the child had all the adult teeth. By then, the jaw stopped growing, right? And that's around what age? Like 12? 12, 12, that's 13. Usually when people are starting. The standard orthodontic age? I think age. it's too late. Too. Way too late. Way yeah. too late if you're going to fix what I'm talking about, which is the airway. Yeah. Because remember, if a child has a narrow jaw, widening it early helps. Yeah. Uh, the American Orthodontic Association is recommending the first consult should take uh, place by age seven. And that's great because that's when you have a lot of growth of the jaw. Mm -hmm. So take home message one from our research, the children who really did better, who minimized the need for orthodontic therapy, for those kids we treated early with arch development and encouraging the jaw to grow forward, which improved their airway. All right, awesome. And I know um, we had also talked about um, when, improve, when you improve the airway, um, a good topic number two that I think is a takeaway for parents is the ADD connection to yeah, yeah. airway issues. So this is a big one that I haven't actually talked a ton about on this channel, but I think if he can share some information about it today, it would be really, really helpful for the moms and dads out there um, whose kids have been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. So tell us about that connection. Um, a lot of the children who were referred to me, just because of the age they were referred, on their medical history, they tick their on Ritalin because they've been diagnosed with ADHD. I asked the parent who made the diagnosis, yeah. right? And of course, the, the, the giveaway answer is, oh, well, my, uh, my child's teacher thought that he's disruptive in class, so that was the diagnosis. Yeah. I said, are you kidding me? You know? <laughs> I mean, there is a genuine condition called ADHD, uh, but in our study, we showed that 60% of the children who had ADHD actually had sleep sort of breathing problems from the sleep study. Wow. And what we also have shown is that once we improve their jaw size, their nasal breathing, their sleep, yeah. they came off their medication. Now I'm happy to send any parent that's uh, viewing this uh, the classical papers that link poor sleep or sleep sort of breathing with the misdiagnosis of ADHD. Now and that's not to say that every child who has ADHD um, doesn't really have ADHD, yeah. right? Yeah, but course. it's to say probably one in two have been misdiagnosed uh, with having sleep sort of breathing problems. So I think that's... Yeah, important. I think so too. And really quick, make the connection because a lot of parents don't understand like how can sleep issues get confused yep. with ADD. Good point. Good so point. how does that overlap? Well, Sarah, when you're an adult and you don't have a good night's sleep, we're tired, we're lethargic. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Child works the other way. If you have young children and they stay up one hour past their bedtime, they're climbing the wall. Yeah, they get right? crazy. They get crazy. They get hyperactive. <laughs> yeah. So what happens is these children, these children are not sleeping well. They may sleep eight hours or ten hours, but they're not getting the right quality sleep because they may be having apneic events or upper airway resistance mm -hmm. problems. So, so as a result, they become hyperactive. But rather than treat the hyperactivity with medication, actually see if you can improve the sleep. I yeah. think that's a big message. And then that can help their focus at school, their concentration, their ability to learn and absorb information and to 
to sit still. It's all good stuff. So um, let's talk about the third takeaway though. Um, point number three, um, we talked about before, he is a huge advocate for myofunctional therapy and that's why I'm talking to him today. So um, let's talk about that. You, you'd be, you, I know you'd be the most interested in that part of my research. <laughs> of course, right. <laughs> um, we found that children who had orthodontics had better stability of the development of their jaws if they undertook um, myofunctional therapy. Right? Okay. So it makes sense. Yeah. So here's a child who comes with a narrow jaw, the tongue can't sit there. Yeah, it's in the bottom. Right? Mm -hmm. We improve the airway so they can then start using their nose. We widen the jaw, but the thing is, that doesn't automatically mean they revert from mouth breathing to nasal breathing. Exactly. They've got to yeah. learn how to do that. I always say to parents, we teach our kids how to talk, we teach our kids how to walk. We've got to teach our kids how to breathe through the nose and get their tongue in the right position. And one of the reasons I asked Sarah to come over to Australia is because I knew you were passionate, as passionate about this as I am. Yeah. And that is, breathe through your nose, lips together, tongue, tongue on the palate. Yep. And what we were able to show, as we do that, not only does it help my orthodontics, it actually showed better uh, treatment outcomes for the children who had the sleep disorder breathing problems. And it makes sense because all these muscles that collapse when you fall asleep, if you're doing your exercises, it's really important to do those exercises, yeah. it actually keeps that forward. Uh, how else can I explain it? Uh, the British Medical Journal showed one of the best ways to treat snoring is to learn to play the didgeridoo. Why? Yeah. <laughs> A lot of those muscles um, are uh, toned and exercised. And that's something I know Sarah does really well. So yeah, so take home message number three, the children who had the best outcome, had the best sleep at the end of treatment, were those who had the inner and throat involvement, the orthopedic correction, and did their myofunctional exercises. That was really yeah. important. And I love hearing that because you're an orthodontist, and a lot of the orthodontists that I know don't even know about myofunctional therapy. And that so, was me, remember, when I yeah, graduated. As I know, well. and it doesn't mean they're bad doctors. It's yeah. just you don't know what you don't know. So exactly. I love hearing orthodontists like Derek Mahoney talking about myofunctional therapy as part of the treatment protocol. So and, 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 and I mean, it's not just Derek Mahoney. Look at the research coming out of Stanford University. Yeah, Stanford exactly. Medical School, Christian Gumino, his legacy in sleep medicine is my functional therapy. Yeah. He is saying that is the missing link for all the years. So we're talking high level yeah. academic research. And I think that's important for parents to understand because you do get the non believers who say this is snake oil, it doesn't work, you know. <laughs> Which is so and silly. that was me. That was me, I must admit. I've read the research, I've seen it in my patients, it does work. The only time it doesn't work is when the kids don't do their exercises. That's true. Right? Yes, <laughs> yes, totally. So, all right, well, I think that's it, unless you have any last words. No, thanks very much for the time, and we're going to enjoy this uh, sunshine. Yes, so we will get back and enjoy the rest of the Nice conference. to speak to your audience. Yeah. Thank Sarah. you so much, you guys, for watching this video. Um, you can check out Derek Mahoney on his website. I'll link all his details below, but you can find him on Facebook, find him on Instagram, and I will provide all that research information that he's talking about as well. So, all right, you guys, um, I will talk with you later.